Thank you, last Karen Corla. Um, and as per my uh, colleague's request, I have no connection with the greyhound industry. Um, the Laura Lynn Foundation, the Alzheimer's Society, the Parkinson's Association, uh, Dementia Ireland, the Samaritans, Spun Out, the Irish Red Cross, Pieta House, the Rape Crisis Centres. These are all organisations that provide an invaluable service to many, many vulnerable people in our country. They are also all organisations that receive less money from government funding than the Greyhounds receive on an annual basis. So I just want, you know, Laura Lynn Foundation is a hospice that provides support to terminally ill children, gets less money than the Greyhounds. Joe Biden um, has said, and I absolutely agree with him, he has said, don't tell me what your values are. Show me your budgets and I will tell you what you value. And unfortunately, this government and many opposition TDs value and prioritise an industry uh, that has a history of questionable governance and animal welfare issues, a, an industry that is unviable, untenable and unsustainable. For 20 years, the state has given special treatment to this sector and has provided ring fence funding to the tune of around 200 million since Greyhound Racing Act was passed in 2001. I know very few sectors that have been given this special treatment. You'd be hard pressed to see so much funding ring fenced in frontline community services, despite the huge demand for their outreach supports. During the pandemic, we have seen domestic abuse instances on the rise, mental health issues increasing, and disability services shut down due to COVID-19. Yet these sectors have received marginal, marginal support and help from the state to meet this rising demand. And to add insult to injury, the state decides to increase the funding to the greyhound industry by 2.4 million in the budget next year. 19 million could go a long way towards addressing the increased demand for domestic abuse services and the increase in the number of first-time callers to organisations such as Women's Aid. This shadow pandemic is looming large in our society and it's not cheap for organisations like Women's Aid to carry out awareness campaigns, to fund helplines and to give that fundamental service um, to, to, to women and children who are suffering from domestic abuse. It's certainly not cheap to run a shelter for women and their children. The money simply is not there for that. The same goes for youth services, which my colleague has also mentioned. They received five million in the budget in 2021. But investing in these youth could provide a huge societal dividend, much more than what we would see from the greyhound industry. I also want to note that we have actually declared a biodiversity and climate crisis in this country. And today the EPA issued their State of the Environment report, which really lays bare the dire state of our environment. And despite this, frontline environmental organisations are still inadequately funded. If you look at Birdwatch Ireland, they received a paltry €16,000 from the government. And compare that to the €19.2 million you'll be given the, the greyhound industry next year. The Irish Wildlife Trust received 15000 It's now time that we actually put our money where our mouth is and start funding these services. Um, that will actually do something for our country, that will do something for our communities. Um, to the TDs that are saying that this is a rural versus urban issue, it absolutely is not. This is an issue about where we as a state decide to spend our money, what we prioritise. Rural women need access to domestic violence services. Rural communities need access to mental health services, to dementia services. It is not a rural and urban issue. And if, as those TDs are saying, this industry is so successful, it's so important to the uh, economies uh, of, of rural, uh, rural towns and villages, well, fine, you know, let's regulate the industry, but let this industry stand on its own four legs. We cannot continue to fund this industry. We have other issues and other priorities that we should be funding. So, Ken Corla, this is not a complicated motion. It's not a complicated issue. The choice is clear. Will this government decide to stand with organisations at the front line of our pandemic and our environmental crisis? Or will it continue to stand beside and devote precious resources to an industry that continues to lose taxpayers' money, which invests in practices which results in the killing of animals 
and, an in, and in an industry that no longer reflects the majority wishes of the people of this country.